Hello and welcome back to another edition of the Hiking Journal. In today's episode, I take a tough solo hike up the Dripping Springs Trail in the Cleveland National Forest, just east of Temecula's wine country. The Cleveland National Forest encompasses some 460,000 acres, or roughly 720 square miles of mostly chaparral. It also has a few riparian areas, that means creekside or streamside, you know, where all the poison oak grows. A warm, dry Mediterranean climate prevails over the forest here. That's why the grapes do so well here in Temecula. It's also the southernmost U.S. national forest in California and is administered by the U.S. Forest Service, a government agency within the United States Department of Agriculture. It is divided into three areas, the DeCanso, Palomar, and Chibuco Ranger Districts, and is located in the counties of San Diego, Riverside, and Orange. Prior to the establishment of the 21 California missions, human impact on the land was relatively insignificant by Indian natives. However, with the arrival of the ranching culture, the landscape underwent more dramatic changes. Settled at first, as the native grasslands were slowly replaced by European and Asian weeds and other introduced plants. Widespread overgrazing throughout the area, brush and trees cut for fence posts, and fires set to produce forage expanded the impact well beyond that of what the Indians had done in the previous centuries. Oh boy. In 1869, gold was discovered near Julian, and it attracted hordes of miners from the mother lode and swelled the town to a population greater than that of San Diego. Imagine that. Also during this period, zinc, lead, and silver mines were booming in the western canyons of the nearby Santa Ana Mountains, hence the name Silverado Canyon. In nearby Tribuco Canyon stood the remains of one of the large and very unproductive tin mines, once owned by Gail Borden, that's actually a dude, of the Eagle Milk Company. He had hoped to use his tin produced from the mine to make cans for his milk. The influx of miners left its mark on the land. Trees were cut for mine timbers, heat and cooking fuel. Great expanses of brush were burned so miners could penetrate new areas to search for minerals. As the mines petered out, so did many of the early ranches that had been overgrazed and had lost their chief workforce as the Indian population died off due to hardship and disease. Early reports from the 1870s to 1880s refer to fires that burned uncontrolled for weeks at a time. Lack of protection from the fires were causing serious damage to the irrigation works and the water supplies of the rural areas, the small metropolitan areas of San Diego, and other coastal towns of the late 1800s. The need for a forest reserve was evident. The first California Forestry Commission was appointed by former Civil War General and now the California Governor, George Stoneman, in 1886 and recorded the necessity for special protection of the watershed cover to prevent the occurrence of major fires and subsequent erosion, which was injuring the climate, agriculture, and future prospects of Southern California. Sounds like not much has changed, huh? I guess we're still fighting that battle, or so it seems. Regardless, the Forest Reserve Act was passed in 1891. These early forest reserves had been administered by the General Land Office in the U.S. Department of the Interior. However, the General Land Office lacked any trained foresters to aggressively take charge. As a result, in 1905, the reserves were transferred to a new Bureau of Forestry, now called the U.S. Forest Service, in the U.S. Department of Agriculture. In 1907, their designation as forest reserves was changed to National Forests. The Cleveland National Forest was officially created on July 1, 1908, with the consolidation of Tribuco Canyon National Reserve and the San Jacinto National Reserve by President Theodore Roosevelt, who in honor of his buddy and former president, Grover Cleveland, named the forest after him. Okay, is it just me or does Grover Cleveland actually look a lot like Frank Shirley, you know, Clark Griswold's boss on Christmas vacation? And did you know the very first ranger's cabin on the Cleveland National Forest was built in 1911 and it still stands today, located in the El Prado campground of the Laguna Mountain Recreation Area. Okay, so now you know a little bit about the Cleveland National Forest, how it got its start, and how it got its name. Now if I could only find out how the Dripping Springs Trail got its name, because there's not one damn drop of water in that whole place. The trail I'm taking today is a tough one from just about anyone's standards. The out and back trail basically heads straight up the mountain with over 3,000 feet of elevation gain. 
and it's not a short one either. My GPS clocked almost 15 miles round trip of open, exposed, bone-dry switchbacks, sometimes blocked by overhead high manzanita and brush. It was a daunting task, but on this cool, clear day I was up for it, and I hit the trail early in the morning from the Dripping Springs Campground Hiker parking lot off Highway 79. Here I hung my adventure pass in the window and began my half-mile walk through the vacant campground to the trailhead and the official start of the Dripping Springs Trail. Well, <clears throat> well good morning. Today is a, a Thursday and I'm going to head up the uh, Dripping Springs Trail uh, here in uh, Riverside County. Uh, it's about 45 degrees. The trail hits a little chilly, but uh, and if this area looks familiar, it's because I was just here uh, about three weeks ago. I did the uh, Wild Horse Trail. Uh, so I'm going to start at the same place, go up about a, not even a quarter mile, less than that. And instead of going left on the Wild Horse, I'm going to go straight up the Dripping Springs Trail up into the Agua Tibia Wilderness. It's going to be a long hike today. It's going to be between 12 and a half to 14 miles and it's going to have uh, about 3,000 feet of elevation gain. So it's going to be a tough one today. It's going to be nice and clear. There's going to be some high level clouds moving in because it is supposed to rain tomorrow. So hopefully it'll cool it down a little bit. It's supposed to be about 75 today. And I think probably at the upper elevations, it'll be probably closer to 65. But anyway, on the way back, uh, I'm going to be in direct sun. There's no shade up there. It's all open and exposed. Uh, but right now it's a little chilly. So take advantage of this cool time of the day when I start climbing because it's gonna it's gonna heat up real quick well if memory serves me right from doing this trail in the past the trail begins at the end of the parking lot here and it's gonna go up and over that first mountain that you see in front of us and in the back you'll see another one with some tall pine trees and like a ravine I think that's where we're going today way up there there's a little rabbit, just getting some grass this morning as we're heading down toward the uh, end of the parking lot. What I noticed today, there's a fat squirrel right over here, one in the bushes, a lot of uh, scrub jays. Uh, it looks like the campground is pretty much empty, but almost every single one of the uh, camp spaces have reserve tags on them. So that's a good thing. Nice little brush rabbit. He's kind of camouflaged in the grass and the weeds, but you can see him pretty well. You know, it's always good to uh, Sign in whenever you see a trail register like that because it lets the rangers know what trail you're going to be on, uh, what your name is. This way, if for some reason, God forbid, something happens to you and somebody calls, they'll say, yeah, we, we checked the register. He's up here. He didn't go left. He went right. He didn't go to the wild horse. He went to the Dripping Springs. And that just cut their search grid in half. So uh, good thing to do. And also make sure you sign back in when you return. Pretty noisy here today <laughs> between the woodpeckers and the blue jays and the sparrows and the doves. This is looking at a Royal Seiko Creek right here. This is the creek that is protected because of the uh, Western Arroyo toad. It's one of the uh, endangered species. It lives here in the Royal Seiko Creek, it lays its eggs, I guess, in the sand. Anyway, the uh, Wild Horse Peak Trail goes up that way, but we're going to be going that way. It's actually really nice here today.
Well, does this sign look familiar? This is the one we were just on about three weeks ago, Wild Horse Trail heading that way. We're gonna be going that way right there, which is a Dripping Springs Trail. You can see the cut from the side of the hill. That's where the open, uh, open pathway starts. Full exposure to the sun, and it's a pretty steep climb. 3,000 feet today, so I'm gonna get my workout today. Gonna get in my steps. You know, as we start up this trail in the uh, direct sunlight, there's a couple of things about this trail. One is, besides it being open and exposed, the best thing about it is it's five minutes from the house. <laughs> That's awesome, huh? Not too many places you can go and have a five minute drive and be in the trailhead. So that goes to show you how many times I've been up here, but because the trail isn't that exciting, I usually just save it for a day when I want to put in some miles. I'm tired of being cooped up in the house. And I want to get some cardio in and some leg strength workout in. So that's what today is. Hopefully we'll uh, get something interesting to take some videos of later. But right now it's just climbing in the sun. If you haven't noticed today, I'm wearing a different kilt. I'll back up so you can see it here. This is a uh, basically a utility kilt. It's called the El Commando. It's from Mountain Hardware. Hence the logo over here. This is the first kilt that I bought. Oh, probably 10 years ago or so. In the back, like all kilts should have. Not in the front. That's a skirt. Kilts have the pleats in the back. But what this kilt does have that the other kilts don't have is it's got these great big side pockets. These things are great for energy bars or your sunglasses, your cell phone maybe, and uh, anything that you need access to on the trail. Sometimes I keep a lens cleaner for the camera. But anyway, we're in the Utila Kilt today. It's uh, like a light microfiber. It, uh, it breathes really well, it dries fast, it's fairly lightweight. Um, and of course, obviously, it's got all the benefits of wearing a kilt. So. Uh, what's better than that? This is one of the first Utila kilts made. It's uh, no longer available on the Mountain Hardware website or at REI. I'm kind of glad I got it when I did. I think I used my REI dividend for this like maybe 10 years ago. But anyway, I got to keep heading up the trail. It's not getting any closer just standing here. Well, as we're coming up to the point on the trail here, you have a little better view of San Jacinto. And what you also have up here is way off in the distance. See if I can zoom in on it a little bit. Is, uh, I think it's right there, is Mount Baldy. Actually, take that back. That's Gorgonio right there in the distance, 11,000. 503 feet right there. And just for reference, San Jacinto is 10,834. You know, I've only been hiking for uh, about a half hour. Maybe a little over a half hour and I'm already sweating. I think it's time to take the, the blue shirt off. This is uh, Orvis, uh, kind of a mock zip T-neck long sleeve. Uh, it's kind of got like a fleece, polyester fleece uh, fabric to it. The best part, I paid three bucks for it at Goodwill. Can't beat that. But I'm getting hot, so it's got to come off. Well, that's where we're heading up and over that. But we've come to this uh, place along the trail with some pretty good views. I, I know this is even going to get better as we get higher up. But way off in the distance... Let's see if you can see that. That's San Diego Peak. That's Orange County's high point. It's like 60, 5,600 feet and change. And then way off in the distance, 
just to the uh, right of that little nub in the gap there. That's uh, that is Mount Baldy. That's uh, 10,064. And if I swing around, you'll see the. Uh, in fact, over here, it looks like we have an orange grove of some kind. Temecula Valley is known for its vineyards. And I don't know if we'll see any from this elevation, but maybe as we work our way to the right and views of San Gorgonio and once again, view of San Jacinto. And right here, right now, there's not a breath of air. It's deathly quiet. Well, we're almost a, almost a mile and a half in. Well, we're probably about two miles in, I would imagine, to the Dripping Springs Trail. And we've come to this little plateau and we have our first glimpse of Vale Lake. Vale Lake is a man-made lake. Uh, there's a dam on the far end. You might be able to see part of it over there in the corner. Um, looks like the water level is really low because off to the right you'll see like a reddish patch. That's normally underwater. And if we get higher up even more, even further, we might actually have a view of Lake Skinner or even Diamond Valley Lake. But what we do have is a pretty good view of the Temecula Valley from this angle. That's it down there. I'll view off toward Lake Elsinore to the northwest and our view of Santiago Peak. And there's a little better view of Vale Lake down in the distance. And in fact, actually, you can actually see uh, a truck with a red uh, cab going up Highway 79. And you can also see the trailhead. Now well, I think I'm going to take advantage of this little shady spot in the trail and maybe uh, get a little snack. I have some... Uh, energy gels and I'm kind of starting to feel the effects of the exertion from coming up here and now's as good as time as any uh, between now and the turnaround point at the top that's where I'm gonna probably need it the most to get me to the top here I'm about three miles in to Ruby and Springs Trail this is what I brought today this little tin and inside there, I've got uh, a built, uh, kind of like a protein bar. It's got 20 grams of protein, about honey stinger. And I also brought some uh, little Altoids just to help with the dry mouth. Then I also have several of these honey stingers. So I'm going to put one in my pocket right now for later. And I'm going to take the other one now. And in fact... I think I'm gonna have one of these now too as well, just to keep a carbohydrate load up. And take a good break here in the shade, I need it. So uh, 10 comes in handy. Uh, besides uh, two liters of water in a hydration bladder in my pack, I've also got two one liter bottles of water, one on either side of my pack. So I've got a full gallon of water today and this one from Poland Springs is not only water from Maine, it's also got um, electrolyte supplements in it. And this one actually has uh, scratch, and I think it's lemon lime. It's a uh, one packet for 16 to 24 ounces. I put two packs in here. So this is a full 32 ounce quart with uh, two uh, 80 calorie scratch hydration supplements, electrolyte replacements. So all this humping and sweating I'm doing up here on this on this trail this uh, electrolyte supplement and the energy gels are going to help me today I was prepared today I knew I knew this was going to be a tough climb and the lemon lime is refreshing as well I haven't seen anybody on the trail today not a soul 
there was nobody logged in on the trailhead. There was one car at the trailhead, and I haven't seen him. He didn't log in, so I don't know if it's just somebody visiting somebody that's that's camping down there, or maybe it belongs to the camp post. I don't know. I can't believe there's no wind right here. I'm getting a lot better views over at uh, Vail Lake now. If I get a little higher up, get a little better shot, I'll take another video of Vail Lake. It's uh, it's gorgeous here today. It, it's really nice. It's only going to be 75. It feels like 85 right now in the sun, but 75, man. If it gets much hotter than 80 degrees, I don't think I would be up here. I plan on staying a lot more hydrated today than the last time. You know, last time I was uh, I was up in this section, this dry open slope, uh, I was startled by something that slithered across the trail. It was a uh, coach whip snake. That sucker was quick, man. Got the camera out, tried to film him, and it was too late. He was gone. He was down in the bushes. But if you've ever seen one, they're not poisonous. There's no venom in them. They're the long and skinny black snakes with a white stripe, and they live in some of the arid environments like this. And he came from the bushes to the right and was gone. Anyway, I'm up in the full sun now, so now is where I got to pay the piper, I guess. Well, I told you as we climbed, our views would just keep getting better and better. And that's a better view of Vale Lake. Let's see if we can uh, get a little better shot there. You can see the dam on the far end, the white structure. And of course, off in the distance is Gorgonio and San Jacinto. As I swing around, you can see Baldy way off in the distance. And of course, Saddleback. As we work around, way around the range. And just to give you an idea of where we're going, we're gonna be going up there. Which means we have more climbing to do. And the trail, which is right in front of me here, is gonna go up to that notch. And it's gonna work its way around up into those pine trees. Starting to cook now, getting hot. Now, if you remember when we started this hike, it shows you off in the distance. There was a peak, and then there was a valley. And there was another peak. That right there is the first hill. And in front of me is the second one. So that's what we're shooting for. We're shooting for that second peak on the exposed. At least here there's a good breeze. Feels good. Now, you know, the name of this trail is the Dripping Springs Trail. And if anybody knows how this trail got its name, post a note in the comments down below because there's no water anywhere up here. We got some more great views coming up off to the west. I don't know if you can see it from here over toward all its Mecula Valley. It's gorgeous down there. But we're, but we're still climbing. You know, even though it's been seven years since I've been on this trail, I do remember this spot. And if there ever was a great spot up here to take a break, this would be it. Got a nice place to sit, and it's in the shade. You know, even this is uh, just Manzanita. It is nice to have a little shaded canopy along the trail. This is welcome. I'll take my time going through here. Enjoy this moment of shade while it lasts. 
because in a moment I'll be out in the sun again. Well, this is white sage right here. This grows along the trail. And if you rub this between your fingers and then smell it, it smells just like the sage you put on pasta. Well, we're still climbing, of course, in the sun, but I did come out to this spot where you have a really good view of Vail Lake, along with everything else. But what you can see now that you couldn't see before is Lake Skinner. Lake Skinner is over that direction. And I don't know if we'll be able to see it on this hike, but Diamond Valley Lake or Damignani Reservoir is over to the right, but it's behind those hills. Anyway, we're getting there. I'm starting to get tired too. Well, this is the uh, last valley. We've crossed over the top of a sub peak and now we're working our way up finally into the pines. You can see the trail is going to be going straight ahead there. And up in that notch, you can see where the trail cuts across that slope and uh, heads from right to left and then bends back around to the right into that notch. Up there, my friends, is where we're headed. Right up in there. You know, now that I've come around to this secondary valley, I've realized that over on that peak right there, that's High Point. That's the uh, fire tower on top of High Point Lookout. It's the highest point in the Palomar Range as it works its way to the right. Behind us, back in there, is the Palomar Observatory. Well, I'm taking a break here in the shade. It's uh, about 10 after 11. I started hiking about 8. And uh, according to the GPS right now, I'm at, I'm at 6.24 miles right here. So... I think it's about seven. I think last time I was up here, I clocked 14.2 round trip. That was from the car to the turnaround and back. And that included the half mile each way of going through the campground. So it's about 14 and change round trip. So that means I'm uh, probably about a mile or less from my lunch stop. And I'm ready. I'll, I'll probably be there before 12, I imagine. I might even be there. 11.30, 11.45, so we got to keep going. Well, this is our first fern we've seen on the trail. It hasn't been moist enough to support life as a fern, but under the crack of that boulder, it must retain enough moisture for it. Well, as I'm getting closer to my destination, the trail's actually getting harder. It's getting steeper. I'm at about, uh, well, I'll tell you, I'm at uh, 6.9 miles right now. My elevation of almost 4,100 feet. I don't know what the uh, elevation is at the turn, but it can't be that much farther away. I'm almost at seven miles right here. You can see where I came from, the trail. That's That was one of the mountains that was in front of us when we started. And uh, this slope between there and here is quite the tough stretch. I thought this would be the easier section as we worked our way up to the top, but not so. It's uh, 1130 right now. I thought I'd be uh, either right there by 1145, 12 at the latest. I'm sure I still will be, but in the meantime, you have a great view over this direction of Vale Lake. And off that way is Skinner. And I picked a great day to be up here because not only is it clear, it's got a nice cool breeze. Even though I'm dying because I'm hot, I'm in the sun, at least there's a cool breeze. So we're getting there, probably a half hour we'll be there. You know, I mentioned it earlier, that's High Point Lookout right there. And to the right, 
I don't know if you can see it in the video, but that is the Hale Telescope. Let's see if I can get that in the video here. There you go. The Hale Telescope on top of Mount Palomar. And of course, that's the high point. And just when you thought you'd never see it, finally, the pine trees and the end of the trail. Well, this is our first glimpse of a magnificent pine tree. Never thought I would see a pine tree up here. I've been looking for this for almost seven miles as the airplanes fly above us here. I only have to go another 100 yards or so and I will reach my lunch destination. Well, have you heard of false summits? Well, that was a false pine grove. I am not there yet. I burst out into the sun again. It is getting close, so it's right at the convergence of this little uh, draw right here. So we'll still be there in 10 minutes, but oh, my heart sank when I busted out into the sun, I'll tell you that. Well, what I thought was my uh, oak grove is not. It's actually right behind us, or right in front of us there. You can see those trees. But the trail has become a lot more overgrown down at this level. So you can see that some trail maintenance has been done, but I was whacking through some bushes and therefore I, like that. And therefore I do have some scratches on my legs and on my arms. I'm a little worried about ticks because they like to cling on to the brush and grab onto clothing or your skin as you hike by. So when I get up here, I'll do a quick tick check. And of course, I'll also do a more thorough tick check when I get home. Well, I finally reached the turnaround. This is where I'm gonna set up my lunch spot. But wouldn't you know it, the spot that you normally set up right there on that log is in full sun. The trail does continue a little ways, not too much farther. Then you'll reach the dead end of the Dripping Springs Trail and you'll meet the Palomar and Maggie Trail that heads to the east and eventually hooks back up with the Wild Horse Loop if you were to make this a 20 something mile loop. But that's not where we're going today. This is my destination. I brought my hammock. I was hoping I could find a place to put it in the shade. I guess not. Well, I finally reached my lunch spot. And I think today I'm just gonna have some top ramen with a cup of coffee. I do have something special, a little special treat for me that I'll uh, crack open here in a minute. But in the meantime, I'm using my uh, BRS 3000 little super micro lightweight titanium stove. It only weighs 0.9 of an ounce, so less than one ounce of stove weighs. I'm using an old Giga Power canister that I've had for a long time. And I'm just going to make some top ramen. I get about uh, 16 ounces of water. It's uh, cooking inside the pot. It's enough to make the uh, top ramen and there'll be enough left over for uh, a cup of coffee to motivate me for the trip back down. Well, I'm waiting for my uh, top ramen to rehydrate. Might as well uh, enjoy a cup of coffee while I'm out here on the trail. I earned it today, you know, it was uh, almost seven and a half miles from the car where I parked at the Dripping Springs campground to here, so I've got another seven and a half to get back. This uh, caffeine and the coffee ought to help me for the uh, trip back. It's uh, only about 1230. I'll, uh, I got here a little bit before noon. I hung the hammock up in the shade over there. You know, the bad part about being up here at noon is that there's not a lot of sun and straight up noon. So I had to find a spot around the corner here. I sat over there for like 15, 20 minutes uh, to get a load off my feet and get the circulation back up in my legs and felt good. I wish I uh, 
had enough gear to spend the night here, you know, but for some reason this place seemed a little more open and a little better last time I was here. It looks like there's a lot of down oak. So, you know, maybe a fire ripped through here years ago in between the time I went last and now. A lot of it's rotten. It's not nearly as nice as I remembered. Well, the coffee's as good as I remember. This is actually uh, Trader Joe's instant. I brought Trader Joe's today. This is pretty good. And of course, uh, shrimp flavor top ramen is always my go-to. So that's going to pack some carbs in for the trip down. I checked my water supply. I burned through one of the uh, liters of water. And I'm about halfway through the second liter of water. And I don't know what's in my hydration bladder. I imagine I probably have another liter. But I'm going down all the way. And usually I hike downhill about twice as fast as I hike up. So if it took me four hours to get here, it'll take about two to get down. So I got plenty of time today. It's going to be a long day. It's going to be a 15-mile day. This coffee's still too hot to drink, so take a few minutes. Maybe I'll go take my cup of coffee and go sit in the shade somewhere and finish this while this uh, Top Ramen is rehydrating. And I'm taking the opportunity to sit in the shade here while I eat my top ramen. Even though it's not that hot today, it just seems a lot hotter than it is. I haven't seen anybody else on the trail today, nobody. I'm the only one. It's a good day for it though. I need this rest before I start heading back down. And I'm definitely going to need the caffeine. I feel pretty good, though. <clears throat> my legs don't really hurt. I'm a little tired. My feet feel great. My knee feels good. I think once I get some calories in me and get a little more hydration, I'll be ready to go. Remember, I said I had something special today that I brought. It is a uh, West Coast-style... India Pale Ale, and it's from, uh, I guess, Paperback Brewing. Never heard of it before, and uh, sometimes, you know, you buy things because you like the picture on the can. Well, that's what this one was. It's called The Restless Fugitive. I don't know if it's any good or not, but I just love the can, and I Brought a small little ice container with some uh, ice packs. And it kept it really cold. And it uh, I can taste the, uh, the hops already just out of the top of this can. It's actually pretty good. The Restless Fugitive, huh? Who would have thought? I think my old co-workers get a big kick out of that. This is a uh, 6.7% alcohol. It's kind of high for for beer, I guess. Maybe it'll uh, take the edge off on the way down the trail. In the meantime, I'm going to enjoy this shade, and this IPA, and my hike up here to the top of the Dripping Springs Trail in the Cleveland National Forest. Well, that's pretty much going to do it. I, ha I do have to hike seven and a half miles back to the car, but I'm not going to shoot a whole lot of video. I might shoot something here or there if it comes up, but for the most part, this is going to be it. About a 15-mile day. And, you know, when you look at the uh, the web pages for hikes, especially if you go to the National Forest websites and you look, it'll give you a brief description of what you're in for. You know, it'll say there's magnificent views, there's all kinds of wildlife, there's you know, wildflowers everywhere. There's views of this and views of that. And you know what this one said? It said, it's a good place for exercise. <laughs> That's all it says. It didn't, didn't give you a whole lot of hope for this one. And uh, when you're talking 15 miles and over 3,000 feet of elevation gain in a day hike, that's, uh, that's exercise. So I'm going to be tired when I get home. Maybe not as tired if I have the IPA. 
Well, anyway, hope you enjoyed this episode. The Hiking Journal. This is my day hike up to Dripping Springs, the tail end of the Dripping Springs Trail. And uh, be sure and click and subscribe. And this way you can get uh, you can get quick updates whenever I post new episodes. So anyway, take care. Enjoy your day. And get out and hike where you can, especially in the spring, because it's just going to heat up here real quick. Anyway, hopefully I'll be able to make it down okay. And uh, I should be posting this video in a couple weeks, so you'll get to see it. And who knows where I'm going to go next. I still want to go to uh, Hellhole Canyon Preserve. But uh, it's only open uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. So I really don't like going on Fridays because my wife is off at noon on Friday and that's happy hour for us. So so maybe I'll do it on a Monday, I guess. We'll see. It's uh, going to have to be a cool day, though, to go to a place called Hell Old Canyon, don't you think? Anyway, take care. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye. Well, I'm working my way down from the end of the trail, the Dripping Springs Trail. And uh, this is the part I dread. It's seven and a half miles, mostly west facing slopes. No trees, all sun. I do have some pretty uh, phenomenal views, but I'm in the sun. I had to swap out my hat for the white brim hat and uh, make sure I stay hydrated. Luckily, it's not uh, 90 degrees today. It's only 75, but I tell you what, it feels like 85. And I thought I brought sunscreen in uh, my pack, and I must have left it on the workbench in the garage or something, because I don't have it. Or in a sleeveless shirt, so I'm sure I'm gonna pay for this tomorrow. It's okay. It had started my tan for the summer. Anyway, it's uh, three o'clock right now. So I stopped a couple of different times and talked to some people along the trail and had a good conversation with the guy who's gonna be doing the whole PCT next month. We talked about gear and jobs and things like that, and other trails we've done, great guy. Oh man, what a tough day. What a tough day. It was about uh, uh, right at 15 miles, 3,000 feet of elevation gain. It's a little after uh, 4 o'clock. So I made it all the way up to the top of uh, the Dripping Springs Trail from the Dripping Springs Campground here just outside of Spacula. So, anyway, hope you enjoyed this episode. And uh, stick around for the next one. Uh, who knows where it'll be? Maybe it'll be in Hell Hole Canyon, who knows? Well, that'll do it for this episode of the Hiking Journal, the Dripping Springs Trail in the Cleveland National Forest. Be sure and hit the like and subscribe button to get the latest updates and videos of the journal. Oh, and I finally figured out the name of the really friendly hiker I ran into on the way down the mountain who was getting ready for his exciting PCT trek next month. It was Troy Rector. If you happen to run into Troy along the PCT, tell him I said hi. Anyway, take care, be safe, and get out there and do some hiking. Bye-bye.